What if this tiny scoop of white powder could slash your depression risk, sharpen your memory, and help keep your bones unbreakable at the age of 70? It's not a trendy neurotropic, it's just plain creatine. And it's not just for gym bros, and it won't make you big and bulky. I'll debunk that myth later. So I'm Michael, a naturopath who's run thousands of functional lab tests on many people. And today I'll show you why, when, and how to use creatine, plus the one lab marker that can help you understand whether you'd benefit the most. So let's look at creatine 101. It's basically the nature's portable battery pack. Inside every cell, it reloads with phosphate to buffer ATP, and that's your currency of energy whenever you need a burst of energy. So for anyone with undermethylation or the MTHFR gene mutation, creatine's even more important. It's like adding an extra 40% capacity to your ability to do these functions. So as you can see, creatine is not just for building muscles, but by helping methylation, it helps with so many other functions in the body. One of the big functions of creatine is improving your brain power. Five grams a day is shown to improve memory, attention, and even during severe sleep loss, help you think clearer, faster, and just get through the day much better. Creatine can improve mood, and in clinical trials, especially in women, adding creatine is shown to help decrease the antidepressant use and reduce depression scores. Creatine helps to fill energy to the brain and the muscles, so it can help to maintain muscle mass, especially as we get older. A lot of people think of creatine as something for younger people, but now when you get to your 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond, creatine can help muscle mass, and with that, help with bone strength and reduce the risk of fractures later in life and osteoporosis. Postmenopausal women taking creatine while lifting weights have been shown to preserve bone density and gain 14% more strength than just doing exercise alone. And so while you may feel an improvement in energy, some of the benefits like brain function, bone health, they can be subtle and you may not realize it until you get older, but the benefits of taking creatine are still there. So if you're vegetarian or vegan, then you have low creatine coming into the diet. Vegetarians and vegans would benefit the most from taking creatine because their stores are naturally low. There's emerging data showing that creatine can help during pregnancy and breastfeeding, but I would check with your doctor first, but taking three grams a day seems to be safe. So as you reach that perimenopausal stage, getting hormonal imbalances, brain fog, gaining visceral fat, creatine helps to restore cellular energy, sharpen your focus and upgrade lean muscle mass. Gaining more muscle, losing body fat is what we want. And once you get postmenopausal, this is like, you know, ensuring you don't get osteoporosis. Along with strength training, making sure you have enough vitamin D, K2, calcium, it helps to slow down bone loss and fight sarcopenia. As we get older, we lose muscle mass. And then with that, we can't do as much. We have fall over. And that's when we risk breaking bones. Other people can benefit from creatine are obviously athletes, but anyone who is potentially playing sports that could involve head injuries, concussions. Creatine has been shown to be neuroprotective and can help to reduce the risk of concussions and speed up recovery after someone has a concussion. So while I think all women could benefit from taking three to five grams of creatine, by doing some specific lab tests, you can help to understand if you would really benefit the most. So measuring things like homocysteine, that's the one lab marker I mentioned earlier. If your homocysteine is in that five to eight range, you would still benefit from uh, taking creatine. But if it's over eight, especially if it's over 10, creatine can help to reduce down your homocysteine levels, along with things like folate and B12, B6 and B2. And if you want to find out more about homocysteine, I've got a dedicated video just on that topic. I would also consider doing a micronutrient panel, measuring all of your B vitamins, in particular B2, B6, folate and B12, omega-3 fatty acids. These are all important for brain function and the methylation cycle. Doing something like the Vibrant Wellness Neural Zoomer, this is looking at brain inflammation and whether your brain is already starting to decline. And if it is, creatine can help to slow down that process. Doing a test like the gut zoomer, that's a detailed gut test. And if you've got things like leaky gut, creatine is important for helping repair the intestinal cell walls. So what type of creatine do you get? There's an endless number of products out there. The best is simple creatine monohydrate. This is the 
best research form and go for a good quality brand without any fillers or other fancy ingredients. And you only need three to five grams a day. You don't need a loading dose. That's sort of old fashioned science. And if you find that it's causing any gut issues, just take a smaller amount and slowly allow your body to get used to it. And to be honest, there's no perfect time to take it. Taking it straight after a workout might give you like a one to 2% benefit, but the most important thing is to take it sometime in the day, every day, not just on the days that you work out. So let's look at some creatine myths. Number one is that creatine will make me fat. This is not true. Creatine may lead to about one pound gain in body weight, but it's just creatine is pulling water into your cells and then just pumping them up. But the waist measurements and everything like that are going to be not changed or even better. And this helps you lift heavier and burn more calories in the long term, so leading to long term weight loss. And then for dozens of uh, trials on females, there's been no change or no increase in body fat percentage. Another myth is that I'll look puffy or bloated after taking creatine. And that's not true either. The water sits inside the muscle, giving a firmer, more filled out look, not bloated and puffy look. Once again, if you're sensitive, always start on a lower dose, one to two grams and slowly build up to the three to five grams a day. And myth number three, which has been well proven in thousands of studies, is that creatine causes kidney problems. The studies have been done in younger people, athletes, but also older people. And unless you in stage three, four kidney disease, if your estimated GFR, which is a measurement of kidney function, is below 40, 45, you may want to talk to your doctor about it. But for everybody else, creatine is fine. And finally, myth number four is I need to cycle on and off creatine. That's not true at all. You can keep taking creatine daily. It's not going to shut down your own production or own use of creatine. And it's probably easier for the body just to have a ready, steady supply. Creatine will boost your power, protect your bones, sharpen your brain. And so I think that is a great benefit overall. So leave a comment below if you found this creatine helpful. And if you are struggling with hormones, weight gain, things like that, have a look at this next video on 10 ways to lower your estrogen levels.